Hallelujah. God is good. He is awesome, marvelous, and wonderful. I want to encourage you folks to please uh, go to our YouTube channel, uh, DCBN. I want you all to go ahead and, and please subscribe to that channel and remember to click on the bell uh, button so that way you can always receive notification of the things that we do here at the TV station. And uh, I would so greatly appreciate it if also you, you go ahead on Facebook and like the uh, DCBN page as well. So I thank God for all of you. Please go ahead and share the video and we are going to get started. Heavenly Father, God, we give you praise. We thank you today, Father. We praise your name. We magnify you, Lord God. We glorify your name, Father, and we thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness towards us. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our midst, Lord, and what you continue to do. And even right now, as we come in your presence, Father, we ask, oh God, that you will grace us with your mercy. Father, hallelujah, that everything that will be spoken, Father, will be spoken for your glory Lord God uh, father take control of our mind of our understanding hallelujah of our lips father God that everything that we say oh Lord will come straight from your throne uh, God we thank you for divine revelation and divine understanding of your word uh, and every person that is hearing me right now, Father God, I pray, Lord, hallelujah, that your spirit of discernment will, hallelujah, fill them up right now, Lord God. Uh, I pray even right now, Father God, that you will grace them with your understanding, that they will have a mind and a heart, uh, hallelujah, that is receptive, Father God, to receive your word today. Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do in this place. Uh, we thank you for the word that you're about to be released in this place, oh God to you be the glory hallelujah to you be the honor majesty in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah. Christ. the bible hallelujah. says in the book of revelation chapter 6 and i began to read for you the bible says and i saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and i heard as it were the noise of thunder and of the four beasts saying come and see and i saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on on him on the horse had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer and when he had opened the second seal i heard a second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him hallelujah that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they would kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword we're gonna cover all these things and when he had opened the third seal i heard the third beast come and see and i beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and a me uh, um, and their measures of belly for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine pay attention to this now and when he had opened the fourth seal uh, i heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and i looked and behold a pale horse uh, and his name that set on him was death and hell followed with him uh, and power was given unto them over over the fourth part of the earth uh, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth uh, and when he had opened the fifth seal hallelujah jesus i saw under the altar of the uh, under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of god uh, and for the testimony which they held uh, and they cried with a loud voice saying how long O lord holy and true doest thou judge thee and avenge our blood uh, hallelujah on them that dwell on the earth uh, and white robes were given unto every one of them uh, and it was said on to them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servant also 
and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Uh, verse 12, And I beheld uh, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, uh, and the sun became black as sackcloth of, uh, of hair. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as the scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, and rocks fall on us uh, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne uh, and from the wrath of the Lamb uh, for the great day of his wrath is come uh, and who shall be able to stand my God to God be the glory to God be honor, majesty, and praise. He is awesome. He is faithful. He is great. Hallelujah. He is marvelous, and there is none like you. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Yanitza, we want to greet you tonight, and every other person that is joining in right now, we want to greet you. Hallelujah. And pray that today, this night, will be a blessing unto you, and what is about to be spoken will also be a blessing. If you see me doing like this, it's because I had some pain in my head. I think I kind of hurt myself a little so if you see me going like this please you know, don't mind me. But anyway, the seven seals, the trumpet, the bowls depicted the book of, in the book of Revelation. They represent the final judgments of God that are poured out onto the unbelieving inhabitants uh, that live in the end of time when these things are happening. So there are many people that have tried to argue concerning the judgment that is spoken in the book of Revelation. And many people have said, that these things either have already taken place in the time after that Jesus had ascended to the Father or have already taken place after uh, some time after the uh, the 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 after the uh, uh, the overpowering and the dominion of the Roman Empire. But all of these arguments, however, they do not hold any biblical or historical evidence which would prove the, the so-called fact that they are stating. Because uh, even in the book of, uh, of Matthew, when Jesus Christ he was speaking, uh, he says those that are to take place after... I'm sorry, in the book of Revelation, that Jesus uh, said... I'm sorry, that the... the that he says to John that those things that have to take place here after okay so therefore there is an emphasis in revelation chapter 1 verse 19 which tells us clearly that those things have not yet taken place uh, can some have some of them taken place yet we can say that there are what you would call a set some symptoms there are what you would call some signs that have occurred but the judgment of god the full judgment of god have not yet fallen upon the inhabitants of the earth uh, because these things are true and the case for what it is called when it says the futurist uh, it is an interpretation of the book of revelation which actually is on solid ground because we know that god himself uh, he does not lie i got a sinus too my god everything is wrong with me today i got the hand and now the sinus lord jesus but anyway the seal the trumpet the bow judgment are introduced in the book of Revelation chapter 6, chapter 8, and also chapter 15. And each judgment is broken, watch this, into seven distinct act that bring destructions of the earth and those who are alive at that specific time when it will happen and may i emphasize to the point that remember uh after revelation chapter four chapter three i'm sorry the church hallelujah is no longer mentioned in the book of revelation until you get to chapter 18 so that means from that point on after that the church is raptured according uh, According to Thessalonians, uh, the Bible tells us clearly that God himself is going to focus his attention on earth, on the, the, the remaining inhabitants that live in that time when his judgment will fall. 
So therefore, the judgment gets progressively worse. As uh, That's why I love to read the chapter before I even start talking about it. So that way, at least you can have a glimpse, you can have an idea. But the judgment is pro progressively worsening and, and more devastating at the end time progress. Uh, and the seven seals, trumpets, and bows are connected, watch this, to one another now. Okay, so the seven seals introduce the seven trumpets according to Revelation chapter 8 verses 1 through 5 and then the seven trumpets they introduce the seven bows okay according to Revelation chapter 11 15 19 and Revelation chapter 15 verses 1 through 8 so the number seven in the Bible and y'all know me about this that's why I take my time and I prepare this Bible study before I come every time we want to make sure that you get as much as possible and one of the things about me when I teach is that whenever I see numbers it just catches my attention because there you know every single time that not that there's a number that is mentioned in the bible you know god has a specific reason why that number is mentioned why this thing is done at that time why this thing happened at this age why this thing happened you know on this count god has a reason for everything and there are biblical meaning when it comes to numbers in the bible so therefore the number seven in the Bible, it often refers to, watch this, perfection or completeness. And the fact that three, okay, you have the, 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 the seals, the trumpets, and you have the bows. Three, which which basically would depict the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which shows basically that this is the judgment of God in his entirety that is going to be poured upon the inhabitants of the earth. Uh, uh, if, if I were to give you some uh, Bible references, when we said that, uh, let's see here, uh, when we talked about each one introduces the other in regards to the... the, the the seals, the trumpet, and the bows. You have, like I said, Revelation 8, verses 1 through 5, and you have Revelation chapter 11, verses 5 through 6 through 19, and Revelation chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Uh, so, you know, the, the, like I said, the, the, those three, uh, um, things that are happening, the, the trumpet, you have the trumpet, the, the bow, uh, I'm sorry, the trumpet, the seals, the trumpet, and the bows, and, and there are three of them, so therefore that shows the triune God, or should I say it, corres it, it corresponds to the Trinity, and that may indicate that these are judgment from the triune God and represent his full and complete wrath upon the re upon this rebellious world as it will come to. It's already like that anyway, but anyway, so the six seals, now what I'm going to say to you is very important, and you guys need to pay attention to this. The six seals judgments and uh, are unleashed in chapter six of revelation and are comprised with the following list that i'm going to give to you right now number one the first seal on verses one and two it, it identifies with the antichrist that is let loose upon the world we're going to cover all these things and and you know because time is against us i really doubt that we're going to be able to finish everything sister Gilles and jean god bless you my dear and and i encourage you guys please share the video as we keep on going with this and remember after this is over you know uh by tomorrow also that video will no longer be available so i encourage you to pay as much attention as possible and i will remind you to please go and and share uh and, and go to our youtube channel dcbn please subscribe in that channel it is important to us that you subscribe to that channel and hit the click on the ringing bell also so that way you can always be notified when we post new videos now going back to this we said that the six seals judgment that are unleashed in in chapter six uh in the book of revelation they are comprised of the list which i'm gonna give to you right now number one the first seal we say it it indicates the antichrist which is which has gotten loose upon the world the antichrist is let loose upon the world and then the second seal on verses three and four it, it show it, it it indicates that war begins and peace is lost okay and then on verses five and six there is the famine that breaks out and on on verses seven and eight you have the ultimate result of war and famine which 
ultimately is death. That's why we call it ultimate result. Okay. And then on verses 9 and 11, you have the persecution of God's people, which bring more of God's vengeance upon the inhabitants of the earth at that time, but not until their evil has been filled up with the last martyr's death that God will bring about his complete hallelujah uh, judgment upon the earth but right now it is what what you're gonna call the 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 vengeance of god upon the inhabitants of the earth uh, in relevance to the people that have suffered now the sixth seal which uh we were getting to uh in this uh passage we see great earthquake along with uh celestial uh, of heavens, basically things that began to happen in heaven. And if you remember in the book of Genesis, when when in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God says on the fourth day that God created the big lights, the sun and the moon and the stars. And it didn't just create them to give us light, but the Bible says that those things were created also for signs. So those things give us sign of things that will happen. That's why whenever you see a solar eclipse, you see a moon eclipse, and you know people are just fascinated by it, and they they lack the knowledge of God to know that God is giving, you know, is giving us a sign that something is gonna happen. And many times, if you look back in history, you will see that every time there there is a solar eclipse or there is a moon eclipse, blood moon, whatever we call it, something always happened on this earth. So therefore, God creates those big lights, not just to give us light, but also for sign and wonders. The seal judgment are also described, by the way. In Jesus' Olivet Discourse, found in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, the first four are also mentioned on verse uh, 1, in, 1 through 7 in Matthew, chapter uh, 24. The fifth is also mentioned on, on um, verse 9, and the sixth is also mentioned on verse 7 and verse 29. So the first four seals is what we are going to look at right now. Like I said, I'm very excited about this. And before I even start with this, let me go ahead and put it this way. There have been many scholars and many other theologians that have uh, claimed that, you know, the four horsemen are literal horses and they are literal men. And this is completely not true. Re remember that we said to you from the beginning that the entire Bible itself, especially the book of Revelation, is written in three three aspects that we cannot uh, 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 ignore and that is prophetic literal and and symbolic so therefore when you read the Bible we need to understand clearly okay what is God trying to tell me here if you lack knowledge all you have to do is to ask God and he will reveal it to you remember the Holy Spirit is our ultimate teacher uh, um, the Lord it may have gifted me to teach the Bible he may have revealed things to me and give me that gift of teaching yes but your your ultimate teacher is the Holy Spirit. You can learn on your own also because the Spirit of God is there to guide you. And whenever my sakarabasha, I feel the Holy Ghost. And whenever my God, that the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you, you will know it without the shadow of a doubt because you will feel it in your whole body. Are you hearing me here today? So don't let people confuse you in the Bible. That's that's why, you know, a lot of time topics that are very hard, that are very difficult, I, I ask God, I say, Lord, please give me the wisdom. I need to understand it. I remember at some point in time, I did not believe in the triune God. I did not believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even my my pastor, my former pastor, could not explain it to me because we were going back and forth and I was giving him verses, he was giving me verses, each of us proving our own point. At the end, he was like, you know what? Go pray. And when I prayed, the Holy Spirit actually revealed it to me. That's how I saw that. There, there are things in the Bible, men will not be able to teach you those things, but the Holy Spirit will teach it to you and he will bring about confirmation of the things that he teach to you so that way you know that it is him that revealed it. Amen. Some so now going back, the first four seals, first of all, it talks about the four horsemen in the Bible. Horses in scriptures are typically associated, watch this now, with triumph, majesty, power, and conquest. Now I need you to, to, to understand me clearly so that way you understand why God has chosen that 
you know, symbolic horse and a man sitting on that horse to show you the things that to us, should I say, to, to reveal to, to the Apostle John the things that are to come to pass so that we in return may know it. We said horses in the scripture typically are associated with triumph. When there is a triumph, you see the horseman on the horse. Uh, majesty. Hallelujah. You see the horseman. Even the king, he has his specific horse. Nobody else can ride that horse but the, only the king. Amen, somebody. And it also shows power and majesty and, and conquest. Uh, when the king conquers a land, he would come and walk in that land with his horse. He would be on his horse. Okay. So the four horsemen are symbolic descriptions they are not literal descriptions they are symbolic descriptions of different events which will take place in the end of time so every time that you see the bible says you know the the seal is broken and then there was one horseman this one is white this one is red this one is black this one is pale we need to understand what is going to unfold and it is not a, a, a lit they are not literal horsemen a horseman i'm sorry but they are symbolic uh, descriptions of different events which will take place in the end time and again I praise the Lord and I and I pray if you are not if you are not fully serving God I pray that you do because we are living in the last days and God will come at any time for his church are you gonna be like the five wise virgin or the five foolish virgin will you be taken up with the church will you be part of the church or will you be left behind the church the choice is yours so therefore we need to make sure that we put our lives in order and serve God with truth and spirit and, and, and in spirit and in all holiness and sanctification for his glory now the first seal which is which which deals with the first horseman in Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 remember what we said we gave you the list and now we're gonna break that down for you now many people tend to refer to this horseman as Jesus Christ because the Bible says it is he is a white horse when you look on Revelation chapter 1, it says, And I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. He's the one that opened the seals and heard as it were the noise of thunder and one of the beasts saying, Come and see. Verse 2, And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on, on him had a bow and a, a crown was given unto him and he went forth to conquering and to conquer. And a lot of people believe because the Bible also mentioned further back in Revelation uh, the, the end, towards the end of the chapters talks about Jesus Christ also sitting on a white horse. So now when we see that many people, and to my big surprise, many scholars and theologian also, they believe that this horseman is actually Jesus Christ. But uh, they are so wrong because the horseman is not uh, Jesus Christ. This is not true. And Jesus will come with the sword from out of his mouth, as we said, and he will not have a bow in his hand, according to Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. So Jesus Christ is not depicted as a horseman with a bow in his hand but is depicted as a horseman as a horseman with a sword coming out of his mouth so the first horse uh, the first horse is white uh, which is what a conquering king would use to ride in a nation or a city that he has conquered does that make sense to you that's why we told you you know when, when we're looking at horsemen in, in which you know senses or aspects that the horses used to be used and in the time when John was having the revelation so God had to reveal to John things that make sense to him because Jesus always liked he loved to to compare the things of the world and giving examples of the things of the world to compare that with the things in heaven and now with that revelation he is giving the he's doing the same thing with the apostle john in his time in his era the way that things used to work so he's showing that so that way he can give john a better understanding of the revelation so now a king would ride a a, a white horse white ride blah 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 twisting my tongue but anyway a king would ride a white horse hallelujah in a you know to a nation that he has conquered and and the first horse that is depicted in here is white so now basically what happens that nation the king has successfully defeated and the rider carries a bow. Now watch this. Why is it that the that the that the, the horseman has a bow but it doesn't have any arrow? 
Do y'all understand me here? Because the horseman, he is not going to war. He has come because he has conquered and now he is claiming what is his because he has already overtaken that which he has claimed. So therefore he has the bow and the bow is a symbol, watch this now, of his power. Not, a, not, not, not for him to go and fight because he's already fought. He's already won that battle. So he has no more. All he has to do is to show his entrance with the bow, which symbolizes his power and his authority, which communicates that the rider is a conquering warrior. He has already conquered and that he will initially conquer not through force, but watch this now. He will conquer through peace. I'm telling you, I'm very excited about this. And it's just the first horse but anyway that is why there is no arrow that is mentioned in the hand of that white horseman because he has come to conquer and when we when we relate back to the book of daniel in regards to to the revelation that God gave him with the 70 weeks. And by the way, out of the seven weeks, 79s have already passed. And now there's only one week left. And that one week will be disclosed or will be released, will be unleashed in the time after that the church is rapture, which will usher in the horsemen that will come in. But anyway, this is for another study. Um, so now, the, uh, most uh, theologians, they agree that right, the writer represents and refers to as the Antichrist. I could not agree more. The, the Antichrist is depicted in this, and he will be given his crown by a world that elects him. And 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 he and and they hope they they ask and and they hope that this man will bring peace on earth. And as we will continue to read, we will come to know that there has been you know that that this reign will be for seven. I'm sorry, for seven years and for the first three and a half years, indeed, there will be peace on earth. But the apostle Paul, he had declared and he says, and by peace shall many be destroyed. I'm sorry, that Daniel said that and by peace shall many be destroyed because the Antichrist, he comes so that he can rule, so that he may conquer. And his strategy is bringing in a false peace. Amen, somebody. So this fact is described by the prophet Daniel, as we said, and he and and through his uh, policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace. By peace shall he destroy many. Uh, 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 Daniel chapter 8, 25. Like I said, I'm giving you all the Bible references. Go ahead and do your own research. Don't take my word for it. If you don't believe, just go ahead and seek in the Bible yourself and let God speak to you and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, it will not be long before that peace is shattered. Remember, seven year time frame, uh, which basically has to deal with the 70th week. The last week um, in the revelation of Daniel. But anyway, like I said, we're not getting into that because that would be too much. But anyway, a truth that is described by the Apostle Paul in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. He says, while people are saying there is peace and security, watch this, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape because they thought that there would be peace. Now remember that even Jesus, he spoke, he says that the same on the day of Noah that everybody was giving up their, they're giving away their wife, their, their daughters some to marriage. You know, they are are married they are happy you know what i'm saying and they're having fun they don't have time for god and suddenly my god god brought about the rain and the deluge took place are uh, oh, you hearing me here today the same way in sodom and gomorrah everybody was partying they were lust they were lust into their lust amen somebody and suddenly god came and destroyed sodom and gomorrah so the same way when everybody's calling peace on earth listen there is only one perfect peace and that is the peace of christ nobody else can give you peace peace but God when people are calling out for peace sudden war will, 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 will explode sudden war will bust out and people will be surprised do not put your trust in men that's what the Bible says now let's look at the second seal 
My God, Jesus, I'm very excited about this here. Now, this, uh, Sister Tanya Kaliste, God bless you. God bless you all for watching. Please go ahead and share this video as we are giving you this knowledge for the glory of God. The Bible says, freely we have received, freely you shall give. So we make this available for you every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. that you will come on live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Roku, uh, IPTV, and you're going to be able to watch this show live every single time. Now, the second seal which is which deals with the second horseman revelation chapter 3 i'm sorry chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 the bible says and when he had opened the second seal i heard the second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat there on i don't have my glasses to take peace from the earth and they and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword now the second writer watch this now specifically takes the false peace away remember we said that the seven seals they usher in the seven trumpets and the seven trumpets usher in the seven bowls and all of them are connected with one another because they will follow one after the other amen somebody so now watch this the seven the the second seal talks about a red horseman a red horseman and that red horseman is going to bring an end to that false peace which the first horseman had claimed and made the people believe in remember we said that the horsemen are not literal but they are symbolic to the to the events that relate to the final judgment of God that is being poured upon the earth so don't get it confused now now watch this it says that uh, uh, that false peace was established by the Antichrist and no doubt that the Antichrist himself will be involved in war <clears throat> and bloodshed with the red horsemen that depicts all the other wars will break in, in many other places throughout the entire earth. Now the second horseman refers to terrible warfare. Remember that horseman is depicted as a red horseman and he has there he was given power and he has a sword in his hand remember the first horseman only had a bow no arrow so he didn't go to war because he had already come from war and he had conquered now he is claiming his land his possession that's why he came with the bow which symbolizes his authority amen somebody and walking in majesty that's why he's on that white horse and now we have a red horse for the second horseman which depicts bloodshed amen somebody and the sword which also depicts war so the adjective uh, great in the Bible that is mentioned that describes the sword given to a rider of the red horse, it illustrates the exceedingly great carnage that will result for this judgment. And while the term used for the sword itself referred to a short like a short sword that is given to him but it is it, more like you know if you were to picture it, it would be like a like a dagger you know dagger like you know type of sword because remember God is making reference to the era the time when John was living so that he can explain it and when the Romans would carry their swords they have a short sword not a long sword like we know it like I use I do Kung Fu I use sword too so hey <laughs> if y'all want to learn Kung Fu come to me but but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, now he was given that that dagger-like sword, which which basically those type of swords are used by assassins and those involved in close fighting. So Jesus described this period of his time in his Olivet Discourse, and, and I will explain that to you. Uh, he says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. That is Jesus speaking. And a lot of times people, oh, it is the, apoca the, the apocalypse. You know, the horseman is, no, it's not the end. Jesus says that the end is not yet. For nations, watch this, will rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes uh, in various places, according to Matthew chapter 24, 6 and 7. So Jesus had already predicted. He had already prophesied about those things that are to take place. Guess why? Because he is the one that's going to judge anyway. So he already knows everything, right? <laughs> so the third seal 
which basically introduces the third horseman. I'm trying to go fast, even though I know we're not going to have enough time to cover everything tonight. I don't know what time it is right now. My God, it's already 1043, and the Bible said it's supposed to be just one hour. Lord Jesus, if y'all want me to keep going, just send me a, a text, send me a comment right now. Let me know to keep going. Say, preacher, keep going. <laughs> Say, preacher, keep going, and then I'm going to keep going. But if nobody says it, then I'll know y'all not interested, and I'll just stop the Bible study right there. <laughs> but anyway, the third horseman, Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, watch this, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. That is interesting. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and their me and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. My God. Now this, this has a lot to do now. I need to take my time with, with this one here. Now the third horseman, the third horseman represents horrible famine. That's why he has a balance in his hand, and we're gonna dive deeper into that. It represents a horrible famine that will come upon the earth. Remember, the horsemen are not literal men; they are symbolic to the things that God is gonna do on earth. I keep repeating this so I can, you know, get it stuck to your mind, so that way you know. All right. So now, watch this. That man he represents horrible fam famine. Famine, horrible famines that will come upon the earth and he opened the third seal and I heard the living creature say come and see I looked and behold a black horse and its rider and a pair of scale in his hand and I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine Revelation chapter 6 verse 5 and 6 now, the 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 denarius represented a day's wage. I want to make this clear for you now. The denarius represented a day's wage back in the first century. Remember, I said this to you clearly. Jesus, when he was on earth, he used to take livelihood examples, things that happens on earth, to explain the things that are in heaven. And because Jesus is giving this revelation to John, so John is familiar with the things in his era. Makes sense to you. That's why when Jesus is giving that revelation to John, he's making references to those things. That's why he says this precisely so that John can understand <clears throat> exactly what Jesus is saying here. So he's making reference to the days, to, to the equivalence of a day's wage in the time of John so that John can understand and have a great picture of what Jesus is saying. So he says the Narius represented a day's wage back in the first century and a quart of wheat of wheat was about the portion of one person's meal. Does that make sense to you? Denarius, one day wage, and then you have the quart of a wheat, which is the portion of one person's meal. And we know that a house has more than one person if you are in a family. So barely was normally <coughs> used to feed the animals uh, to feed the animals but was sometimes eaten by the very poor now watch this now it also mentioned the oil and the wine and the oil and the wine were usually used for what cooking right and um, the scales that the end that the horseman carries carried by the back horse rider represent a measuring system that will give a person barely enough to eat for a full day's labor does that make sense to you? Let me say it again. The balance that he carried identifies as something, a balance, a weight balance type that he will use so that way he can balance the amount of food, the amount of whatever it is that, they, that the person will barely have enough to eat for one day's labor. So this here, it shows food costing eight to ten times its normal price in the first century. 
okay so now john began to have a clear picture and we are leaning towards that time now where we see that famine is devastating a lot of parts of the earth right now a lot of parts of the world because people can barely eat i'm not saying that this is the fulfillment of this prophecy but i'm saying that these are signs things that are to, that are happening to to get us you know our mindset so that way we don't miss out when jesus comes because when he comes then those things will be fulfilled in their own times so this shows the food costing eight to ten times more the normal price so people will barely be able to eat uh, and clearly famine condition are showcased as we just said it in the third world okay so now Vanita Fowler, God bless you, sister, and I pray that this, this Bible series will be a blessing to all of you. Please, again, remember to share this video on your page, like DCBN uh, 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 page, uh, Duja Corporation Broadcasting Network, and please go on YouTube and subscribe to our channel, DCBN, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. This is very important to us. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube and click the bell, the, the bell for us, please, uh, and God will bless you. Now, and let's continue. So, clearly, famine condition is going to be, is already a showcase this already started but like i said this is not even the tip of the iceberg for what god is gonna do now it talks about the oil i, I want to cover this now it talks about the oil and the wine now basically what this means the bible says that that the that he heard the voice says do not touch the oil and the wine so now watch this things are getting more expensive eight to ten times more expensive and then he says do not touch the oil and the wine it's, so in another sense basically what he's saying is that the rich will get richer the poor will get poorer basically bottom line okay now the fourth seal uh revelation chapter 6 verse 7 and 8 he says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see, verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse, watch this now, and his name <clears throat> that set on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, with death and with the beast of the earth now there is one thing that i want to mention here when you got when you're looking at uh, the bible here beginning on on, on chapter six here and, and on you will realize that god is gonna deal with the people of the earth on a systematic way basically he's taking one quarter one part of the earth and he's taking another part of the earth and he's taking another so that's why that's how god is gonna deal with the people and when we go further we're gonna see that clearly but the fourth Horsemen here, Revelation chapter 6, 7, and 8. The Bible says that this fourth horseman, the rider of this horseman, the rider of this horseman, and, and he is basically, he is, how can I put it for you to understand me? He is, a, a, he is, a, what's the word I'm looking for? He is a, an accumulation, a, a putting together of his preceding you know of those preceding events that took place because put it this way now with the first horseman that came and 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 declared that false peace uh seven years and then the first three and a half years the second horseman hush ushered in and he is the red horseman now he destroyed that false peace and and power was given to him amen somebody and now he was able to destroy and do all sorts of devastating things on earth and now you have the the third horseman that came in and now watch this when the third horseman came in a balance was given to him now we know that when that first horseman came in he declared peace so things all going well you know the car the, the commerce e-commerce whatever you call it you know market stock market everything is booming at that time for three years and a half and then after the the three years and a half is done the red horseman is ushered in now what's gonna happen war begins to break on earth and now stock market is going down everything commerce businesses are being destroyed famine and then they usher in the third horseman which is you basically uh 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 Things getting expensive, uh, uh, and 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 which is the pale horse. Things getting expensive. Th everything is being balanced. People are barely making wages so that they can survive. Because instead of getting a normal wage, now you're getting wages that will feed only one person. When in a family you have five, six people, and so now everything is ushering something else. And now, as a result, to the false peace, and then the red horse comes in and and brings war. And then as a result to the war, the third horseman comes in, and then he brings in 
in a balance and now people cannot eat as they used to things are getting more expensive things are getting more difficult and as a result to that because you cannot eat well now you're gonna die of hunger and that's where the fourth horseman comes into play now the fourth horseman the bible says that his name was death Amen, somebody. His name, uh, let's see here, uh, verses 7 and, yeah, da, 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 uh, yeah, and his name was death, and the Bible said that hell follows with him. So wherever there's death, guess what? The soul's got to go somewhere. That's why hell follows with him. Amen, somebody. So now watch this. It says, uh, the word pale that we're looking at here, when you say a pale, I look and I saw a pale horseman. Yeah, a pale horseman. So the pale or ashen, A-S-H-E-N, is as in some translation in the Greek, it's the word chloros, C-H-L-O-R-O-S, is the word chloros, from which the word uh, uh, chlorophyll, uh, is derived and the yellowish green horse is the color of a corpse listen carefully now so death is the natural result of famine death is the natural re and, and, uh, a famine with Hades and it says that this horseman is gonna be ushered in right after the other horseman comes in so now, a full one quarter of the earth population will perish from the fourth horseman that will be ushered in. Remember, systematically, God is going to deal with the people of the earth. So that showcases why Jesus is in Matthew chapter 24, 21. He says that the time of tribulation will be something that the world has not seen up to that point. Nobody has seen, nobody had, had witnessed, you know, such devastation up to that point. And and guess what? It's going to get from bad to worse to worse to worse. It's not going to get any better. So it is only the beginning of God's judgment that will be upon the earth at that time. So now the uh, the fifth horseman in the book of um, Revelation chapter 6, 9, 11, the fifth horseman here, uh, 9, 11, let's read that. And it says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood and them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little uh, season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were sh and, and that would be fulfilled basically <clears throat> now when we are ushered into the the fifth seal the fifth seal differs from the four early seals that we have uh, uh, already studied the four the first four seals deal with the first, with the four horsemen that basically God is going to be pouring out his wrath upon the inhabitants of the earth and his judgment is going to begin from that point now watch this now when you get to the fifth what is it oh they say keep going a while ago i said if y'all want me to keep going say keep going so yeah, praise the lord now when we get to the fifth seal there is a transition that happened so now the attention of john is transitioned from the earth onto something that is happening in heaven remember john in the book of revelation chapter two and three when god bring him up to heaven and then he saw God, Jesus gave him the letters to the churches, and then on chapter 4, he saw, you know, the Bema seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, and then there was on, on chapter 5, a description of heaven, you know, the, the throne of God, and now on chapter 6 that we are getting into, we see that the judgment of God is, is beginning upon the inhabitants of the earth, because Jesus Christ began to break the seals, now we get to the first, the second, the third, and the fourth horsemen, and as those things are happening, now what happens, the attention of, uh, of John is shifted back to heaven because now when the fifth seal is broke the souls of them that have been
been that have been killed, destroyed, martyred for the sake of Jesus. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost for the sake of Jesus Christ. Now those people are crying out to God. That's why in the book of Matthew chapter five, Jesus says, "Blessed is he who is persecuted for my name's sake. Blessed is he who mourned because guess what? The kingdom of God is gonna be ours. And now because this promise was made, and the people they heard, they witnessed the promises that Jesus spoke, and now we are crying to God, Lord, when are you going to avenge our blood that have been shed on, on, on earth because of those people, those wicked people? And now Jesus says, uh, 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 John saw that a white robe was given to them. But let, let, let us delve into that. So now the fifth seal defers from the four earlier seals and it is not introduced by the voice of the living creatures as we saw with the first four seals that were broken every time that a seal is broken the first uh uh uh, uh the first being the first creature says come and see the second one is broken and the second being say come and see every time and, and now <coughs> i'm sorry and now that we got to the fifth seal, it is not the voice of a being that cries, "Come." The voice which is now heard is not the is now the cry of the oppressed. Is the cry of the oppressed and troubled church? Amen. Somebody just bear with me one moment here. Let me just get here real quick. Okay. So now the points which we require hallucinate, uh, which require. Uh, elucidation here. I want to put this here. Let me do this here real quick. Hold on a second. Just bear with me a moment, please. All right. Now, number one, it was their position. That's why many times when people ask me, people usually say to me, but when somebody dies, I was told when we look at uh, the book of, I believe, uh, Luke chapter 16, uh, beginning on verse 19 or chapter 19, beginning on verse 16, the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The Bible says that the... Um, that after they both died, you know the story, we're not going to go too much into that. But when they both died, both of them went to Hades. And Hades was the place for the people that died. Whether you are good, whether you have been following God's uh, law, or you have lived a wicked life, both of y'all go to Hades, bottom line. But in Hades, there was a set, there was a separation. Those that are way at the bottom in that temporary hell and tormenting place that were suffering, according to the story of Jesus Christ, when he says that the rich man was suffering and he was being tormented when he lifted up his eye so there was a separation and when he looked up beyond that separation he saw what what the bible calls the bosom of abraham and in the bosom of abraham this is where all of the people that follow god's law that obeyed god to the t those people they found refuge there and abraham says that you had your reward when you're on earth and now lazarus is rejoicing of his reward because he is in the bosom of abraham and he's being comforted now watch this when when jesus christ came oh my god i'm going deep now when Jesus Christ came on earth and then after that he was crucified, my God, Jesus, the Bible says that they took it, they took his body in a tomb my God. But Jesus Christ was not in the tomb. Uh, but Jesus Christ, what he did, he went to the lower parts of the earth. Uh, that's why in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says, who is he that ascended except he that descended, descended to the lowest part of the earth. And he took the keys of hell from Satan. He took the power from Satan. And now in the book of Psalm, uh, Psalm 24, when the Bible says, oh, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord mighty in battle. It is Jesus Christ because he is the only one that could have come down. Now, when he went down to the lowest part of, of the earth uh, during those three days that people thought that he was, you know, in the tomb, what did he go to do? He went there not only to to I, I like to say he went there to evangelize you know the people come to see who their lord is and what he did when he was when he was ascending back ascending not from the surface of the earth but he was ascending from the deepest you know roots of the earth to hades to hell because that's where he went to grab those souls in abraham's bosom and then he bring those people out karabo shandaya and he bring them out now because that those people are no longer in hades where are they now because nobody is in heaven yet so where are they remember there are three types or there are three levels of heaven by the way i want to say this there's no seven level of heaven there are three levels of heaven so 
the Bible says, Jesus said, where I am so that y'all, so that you all may be also, but it is not there yet. Even when Jesus Christ was on the cross and those people, those barbarous people, when, when that one guy, he says to Jesus Christ, remember me when you enter into your glory. What Jesus, did Jesus say? This day you will be with me where? In paradise. He didn't say you will be with me in heaven. So nobody has gone to heaven yet. Don't believe people doing that, saying this to you. Now watch this. The Bible says that when Jesus ascended back from the lowest pit of hell onto his heaven. Now watch this. Under the throne of God, under the altar of God, I'm sorry, uh, that's where their position is because when you read uh, uh, verse uh, 9, 10, it says, verse 9, it says, it says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw where? Under the altar, the soul of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So all of those souls, when you and me, when the day comes and Jesus come and say, okay, your time is up now, you know, this is, this is your last second on earth. And then, you know, if we live in right, if we live right and we run the course to the end and now the crown of reward is reserved for you and me and then when we go on to glory we're not going in heaven but we're, we're going to be right among those people under the altar of God until the final judgment amen somebody God made us a promise but that promise is not yet given to them why because the number is not yet complete I hope you are understanding me here and I'm not, and I'm not losing you but anyway, uh, watch this. So number one, their position is under the altar. Number two, their invocation, their prayer. Can I touch on uh, uh, something very clear here? Now watch this. Uh, the, the prayer for their for their vengeance. Now watch this now. You may say, okay, well, they're in heaven right now. And why are they praying for, for vengeance? And I'm saying they're in heaven. And you know, why are they praying for vengeance? Now, one of the things that I want you to say is that those people were given a white robe. Those people are under the altar of God, in the presence of God. You know what that means? It means that they are, they have no imperfection in them. Their souls are under the altar. Their soul is in a perfect state. My God, Jesus. So that means the prayers of those saints are perfect it's perfect prayers in a perfect place to a perfect god from perfect people my god jesus so watch this now their invocation is the prayer that they might be avenged so they are in their right foot in their rightful uh, uh, stay the, in their rightful mind, in their rightful way to ask God for vengeance because they have paid the price. Those people, those wicked people have killed them. They have destroyed them. So now, now God, they are asking for God, where is that vengeance? And now, no, number three, there was a clothing of them with robes. So the robes was given to them and that robe was a robe of comfort. And it was not any kind of robe. It was a, ro a, a white robe. Now, here is the thing that I want you to know. When you look in the Bible, white symbolizes purity, holiness. That's why I say the people under that altar, those souls, they were given a white robe because they were holy. They were perfect. Ah, my God. Anyway, let's keep going. The command to wait patiently a little time longer. So God was telling them, here's a white robe. I want to console you. I want to comfort you. I want you to be encouraged. But you need to know there are more of your brethren, your brothers and your sisters that also have to be perished the same way that they killed you, the same way that they caused you to go through my tears, the same way that they beheaded you, the same way they shot you in the head, the same way that they did that they crucified you. There are some people, your brethren, they have to go through that same martyr and we cannot do anything watch this until this number is complete so i have a message for the people that are listening to me right now who are not servants of god if you are still here and if god has not passed his judgment on this earth yet it is because there are still people of god women and women of god on this earth and god is holding back his judgment because he's waiting for those people to come and take their place under the altar and at the moment and that those people are removed from the face of the earth the wrath and the full judgment of God will begin to pour upon the earth so don't let be don't let it be too late to accept Christ don't let it be too late to serve God don't let it be too late to give your life to Christ because it is 
one decision you will never regret and it is the one of the it is the best and the most important decision you will ever make in your life so the souls john sees under the altar according to verse 9 are in uh, uh, they are uh, uh, in the presence of god because the altar is in god's heavenly temple my god remember there are how many heavens three okay so let's keep going so when we read on in the book we discover that it is mentioned again in in uh, uh revelation chapter 8 verse 3 and it is mentioned twice revelation chapter 8 verse 3 revelation chapter 8 verse 5 uh, chapter 9, 13, chapter 14, 18, and Revelation chapter 16, verse 7. So no altar was included in his detailed description of the heavenly throne room scene uh, uh, in chapter 4 and 5. Remember that it was just the judgment seat of God and then the throne. So now the closest he came to mention in the altar was the Greek word uh, tisiathion. I, I can't even say this right. It's T-H-Y-S-I-A-S T-H-R-I-O-N you try to say it. So, <laughs> so the prayers of the saints also in the book of Revelation chapter 5 uh, verse 8. So now uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let that for you guys to read. I don't have to read it. Uh, but the souls of them that were slain, the souls of them that were slain, that had been put to death by persecution, this is one of the incidental proofs in the Bible that the souls does not cease to exist you know we have those universalist universalist we have those other people those other type of religion that says that after you are dead you cease to exist that is not true because right here god would have to be a liar for what their declaration says to be true because jesus clearly says that those people who died their souls are under uh, the the altar of god and some souls are currently in hades right now so those souls they leave forever our soul leave forever our souls do not cease to exist so do not believe people that say this and also they say that you know our conscious cease to exist and <clears throat> and we do not sleep until resurrection we the, the the bible does not allow me to believe this this fake and and false doctrine if you used to believe in it do not believe in it because this is the key verse here to prove to you that after we die our souls move on it is just a transition just like a baby in a mother's womb the baby's world is the mother's womb and when the baby comes out from the mother's womb which is his world and then comes out to this world to a different world well, it is the same thing with us we are living in this body here this is our world right here but a time will come when we will be transitioned like the baby is transferred from the womb onto the world so we shall be transferred from this world onto eternity now the question is where will you go i hope i'm making this clear enough for you all praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus so now this is not true don't believe on those false uh teachings so these souls of the martyrs are presented as still in existence they are still in existence as remembering what had occurred on earth they remember everything that happened on earth they remember how they had decapitated them they remember how they had killed them shot them to they remember everything as interested in what was now taking place as engaged in prayer and as manifesting earnest desire for the divine interposition to avenge the wrongs which they had suffered and now they are making their own you know uh their own plea to god so that god can avenge them now the fifth seal <clears throat> with the white robe now that is given unto them which we had already mentioned it depicts that the victims however are not forgotten and remember, we say white symbolizes what purity. And it also shows that the victims are not forgotten. They are robes of righteousness. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. I'm giving you those Bible verses. Do your own research. So those who wear them are like God. 
They are like God, seeing him as he is. So those people, my God, what a glorious day when you finally are going to be able to stand and to see God, to kneel down, worship him. There is a song I love to say, the, the, that one singer, I forgot his name, he said, I can only imagine what it will be like when I am in your presence, when I can see your... Oh, Rabbi Shonda, Rabbi Sete. Oh, what an awesome day it will be. Hallelujah. So those who wear those robes, we're going to be like God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Seeing him as he is, reflecting his image. Now watch this. That restoration which Adam had lost, that, 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 that state, that perfection which Adam had lost, now is going to be restored because we are going to be restored to the full image of God. My God, they are acknowledged to be his and they have acknowledged him to be their god persecuted on earth they are honored in heaven remember jesus christ said if you are ashamed of me on earth i will be ashamed of you in heaven but if you honor me on earth if you stand for my name on earth then when you come in heaven i will honor you before my father and that's exactly what jesus christ is gonna do my god that's why those people even to the point of death they never hallelujah gave up their faith uh, in christ jesus because they believe to the end uh, and that reward is waiting for them and for every other person that chooses, my God, the same path uh, to God be the glory and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Now, the sixth seal, my God, I don't know if we're going to be able to cover all this now. <clears throat> the sixth seal is uh, Revelation chapter 12, or well, maybe we can cover it. Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. <clears throat> let's, let's read this real quick. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her uh, 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 untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty of a mighty wind uh, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places uh, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captain and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man uh, hid themselves uh, in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains uh, and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitted on the throne uh, and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come uh, and who shall be able like Abu Sandaya, to who shall be able to stand this is such a great picture. And remember, we said to you that the Bible, the entire Bible, especially the book of Revelation, is translated literally, prophetically, and symbolically. Okay, now in this aspect here that we just read, uh, don't believe, uh, don't, don't just believe me, uh, I mean, what am I saying? Don't just think that it is just on a prophetical level, but also it is on a literal level. And we're going to dive into that real quick. Now, great earthquake. The uniquely intense earthquakes which attend the judgment of the tribulation period is, is tangible evidence of God's hands in the events which transpire in Revelation 6, 12, Revelation 8, 5, Revelation 11, 13, Revelation 16, 8, Matthew chapter 27, 54. So uh, during the tribulation, even though men understand sources of earthquake, understand me clearly now because of science and everything now, we can understand the sources of earthquake. We can predict when, you know, there's going to be a, 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 a hurricane that is coming, Hurricane uh, Irma, Hurricane uh, uh, Matthew, uh, whatever hurricane they even name them because they can predict those things because of science because of technology now be even though they understand the source most of them fail to repent this is the sad part they fail to repent revelation chapter 6 16 when we get to it you will see but a rare exception in the case of the great earthquake in jerusalem where those who avoid death give glory to god in heaven according to revelation chapter 11 13 and we're going to get to that later on next study but jesus said 
great earthquakes would be one of the signs amen somebody would be one of the signs of the beginning of sorrows so remember i said to you a while ago all of those things that are happening there are even famines throughout the, the the entire globe right now you know and a lot of people say oh you know revelation is is beginning to fulfill no those are signs because they will fulfill when the when when the fullness of every seal is released on earth and then earth is feeling the, the, the full impact of what is happening. So, like I said, this is not even the tip of the iceberg right now because those things cannot happen until after the church is raptured. Amen, somebody. So what we are seeing right now is sign. That's why Jesus, he clearly gave us this warning. He says, we will see those things, but do not be afraid because these are, ju are, are just signs. They are not even the beginning. Jesus said that. So those things we see right now, rumors of war all over the place, you know, mother rising against uh, against uh, children, children rising against father, father rising against, ma against wife, you know, all those things happening, brother rising against sister, sister rising, all of those things, they are just signs, amen, when you hear about meteor rocks and all those things, they are just signs, amen, somebody, because those things have not yet happened to their fullness. So anyway, Jesus says that a great earthquake and signs are the beginning of sorrows. Matthew chapter 24 verses 7 and 8. And in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament prophets who predicted a time where God would intensely, would, would intensely shake the earth. Amen. Somebody, Haggai return, uh, um, reveals that global earthquake and the overthrow of the gentile kingdom would precede the return of god's glory and his millennial temple according to haggai chapter 2 verses 6 and 7 and haggai chapter 2 22 to 23 i'm telling you i had to do deep study on this just to make sure that i give you guys the right information so that you can know exactly what the bible is saying and i'm giving you all those bible verses so that way you can do your own research and find out exactly what god is saying in the book of revelation that's why i take my time and i try to explain it to you and remember every wednesday night 10 p.m if you if you are really being blessed by this broadcast every wednesday night 10 p.m join us here and every tuesday night at 9 45 p.m we have a, a prayer which is basically in creole slash english um it's a, a broken chain prayer by my wife and i so I encourage you to do that as well. Amen, somebody. But please remember to go on, on YouTube and subscribe to our channel, to our channel, DCBN, and hit the ringing bell. Please go to YouTube, sub subscribe to our channel, and also like our DCBN page on Facebook. Now, let's just keep going on this real quick. Like we said, Haggai himself, he had prophesied, and he is one of the Old Testament prophets. They call him a minor prophet, including some of the other prophets. But they are not. It doesn't mean that they have lesser power than the other prophets. <laughs> That's not what it means, folks. It simply means that the book that they have written, you know, is is more is lesser than the other books, and they are they are mentioned less in the Bible. But doesn't mean that God was using them in a lesser way or in a smaller way. They are they are prophet of God, people that hear from God, that take words from the mouth of God and to declare those things. Amen. Somebody. So hey, God, He revealed the global earthquake and the overthrow of the Gentile kingdom. Uh, who precede the return of God's glory millennial uh temple and we say and in the book of joel also uh joel joel he saw earthquake associated with a mighty judgment of god in the book of joel chapter 2 verses 10 to 12 and the earthquake affects more than just the face of the earth now this is something that i want to mention also now you see the thing is that when we when we hear about earthquake nowadays because we said that jesus said to you that it's going to be signs now watch this when you hear earthquake now you hear earthquake in one part of the world in a country in one area but this earthquake is going to shake the entire earth, people. So it's not just one part of the, the entire earth is going to be shaken. What a God. Don't play with God, though. Do not play with God. You hear me, oh? Don't play with God. Anyway, my African brothers and sisters. But anyway, so... Uh, the earthquake affects more than just one face of the earth. Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. And in the... Uh, uh, it is used in Joel chapter 2 verse 10 to describe the heavens trembling and uh, catastrophic even extend beyond the geography of the earth to affect the cosmic realm. Okay, so the earth is just part of the whole play that is going to happen, but the entire cosmic is also going to be affected. 
the sun for example became black as sackcloth of hair now remember we said earlier in the book of genesis in the time of creation as we know it and when we say creation we're talking about creation of the earth in time in the, during the time of creation the bible says on the fourth day <clears throat> that's why numbers are very important in the bible as i mentioned to you but jesus says on the fourth day that he he, he he created the big lights and then he created the east and the west the north and the south and then he put order in the cosmos he put order on earth and those big lights are there now remember i said to you those lights are not just there to give us light they're not just there to shine our path but they are also there for signs amen somebody because jesus christ he says that those things are created for signs and every time that a sign is given people they they are uh marveled at the signs but they don't realize that god is trying to speak to us something is gonna happen every time you hear a solar eclipse every because the sun become black as a sackcloth every time that you hear the blood moon it is something that is going to take place and god is trying to warn the people but those people are so hard-headed that they don't listen and next thing you know something happens but anyway let's keep going so Jesus said that uh, cosmic signs would be associated with the time of the end, Matthew chapter 24, 29, Mark chapter 13, verses 24, 25, and you have Luke chapter 21, verse 11. I'm going to give you those verses again. Matthew 24, 29, Mark 13, 24, 25, Luke 21, 11. So from other consideration, we understand that the signs associated with the sixth seal are not only cosmic, but they are sign of this time period. Okay? So, uh, Isaiah 13, 9 and 10, and Joel 3, 14 and 15, those passages, they they deal with, they, 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 they talk concerning the cosmic uh, disturbances. Okay? Uh, clearly, those things take place within the day of the Lord. Uh, according to Joel chapter 2, 30 and 31. So it describes the, 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 the cosmic disturbances before the day of the Lord. And in the prophetic scheme of things, there are several cosmic disturbances. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Oh, that's the passage, is it? Let me see here. Yeah, actually that's the passage I was referring to a while ago. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. The sun and moon were created for signs. Genesis chapter 114, sun and moon were created for signs. They now provide indication that events associated with this seal cannot be explained by natural phenomena. So people will try to explain those things. And it's not going to happen. <clears throat> but it will result in the one who controls the universe, you know, evidently God. And, and, and here's another thing. On the day of rapture, could you imagine the chaos that is going to happen on earth? Somebody, you know, a pilot on an airplane... You know, with, with 400, 500 people. And next thing you know, if the, the the pilot is a believer in Christ and God just raptured that pilot right there and there is no other pilot on the airplane and that airplane got to land somewhere. And not just one airplane, but many airplanes. Unfortunately, it is, uh, it is that. We got to tell the truth. Imagine somebody driving a, a, a truck load of gasoline, you know, going on 95. Next thing you know, that person is is a servant of the Lord and boom God raptured that person and that, that car is going to crash somewhere and all this fuel is going to end up exploding into gas stations and airplanes falling down and trains just going out of track. I mean it's going to be chaos on earth and now watch this. People are going to try to explain it. What happened? Where, where is my son? Where is my wife? Because two people will be in the field. One will be taken. Two will be on the bed. One will be taken. Amen somebody. So it's going to be chaos on earth and people are going to try to find answers and you know people are going to be like you know ufos and all this thing but the bible clearly tells us that god is going to be responsible for all those things because the time of his wrath has come and nobody can escape except the church that's why the church will not be present in those times because the church will not suffer jesus will not allow the church to suffer glory be to God what an awesome husband that we have thank you Jesus so the moon became like blood <clears throat> the entire moon and we have had uh, about, I think it's about five uh, five times for the past uh, I think uh, three uh, three to four hundred years uh, if I'm not mistaken five times that the moon has turned into they call it the blood moon because it gives that bloodish color if I may put it this way so John uses um, 
uses that to uh, he uses to describe the effect upon the moon and the entire moon takes a reddish appearance and when uh, atmospheric dust docking, darkens or moisture refracts its light so the red appearance convey the idea of the judgment red that's why they call it blood moon because it's red it conveys the idea of God's judgment Oh my God, If for those of you that don't believe me, remember the book of Daniel when God gives the, the, the prophecy to Daniel. God, Daniel did not understand it and God says to Daniel, please go ahead and close this book because this is not the time yet, you know, but I'm just giving this to you because I love you, my son. I'm just paraphrasing right now. But anyway, when you look at the statue, I believe I was just, I, I was in class, was it this morning? I had a class this morning and, and I was, we were just talking about that. You know, the statue starting with the head all the way down to the to the ten toes. Amen, somebody. And we talk about how the statue is depicted from Babylon all the way down to the last, you know, uh, uh, kingdom that will reign. And now guess what? All those, you know, Babylon, Greece, Roman Empire, and, and all of... It's all gone. It's all done. And now we are at the... Not even at the feet. We are on the toes. So that goes to tell you that time is at hand there is not a lot of time left as there was 2000 years ago so make yourself right with god before it is too late all right now watch this uh in both, uh, oh, actually, watch this. In both 2014 and 2015, a full lunar eclipse occurred on the first day of Passover. Now, do your own history, and go just go on Google, type in history of the uh, uh, of blood moons or history of solar eclipse. You will see that those things happen either on the day of a of a Jewish feast or or, or holiday or either right before or right after that Jewish holiday because something is going to happen. And on in 2014 and 2015, there was full lunar eclipse that occurred on the first day of Passover and on the first day of Sukkot, which is a feast, of, which is called the Feast of Tabernacle. For those of you that don't know, Sukkot is the Feast of Tabernacle. And, and additionally, two solar eclipses occurred in 2015. You guys remember that. So, uh, just even uh, just seven times as this combination of lunar eclipse happened since the time of Jesus and two of those seven times are within fairly recent memory and in 1948 when Israel was established again as a nation and in 1967 uh, when the six day war occurred so every time that a, a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse occur there is a major event that that takes place on earth so whenever you see a lunar eclipse or a you call blood moon or a solar eclipse know that something is gonna follow because the word of god is yea and amen god does not lie if he says it he's gonna do it so people of god i think that you know what i'm just gonna stop here right now because that actually covers everything i don't have to go too much into detail i did you know put on some more stuff but we're going to stop here. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are watching for the first time, I want to encourage you today, uh, you know, to take God more seriously and to stop playing church. If you are if you are a church person, don't be a church person on the outside, but be a church person all the way. Amen, somebody. So that way, you know, Christ can be pleased with you. And with that being said, I want to encourage each and every one of you today. You know, to really take God more seriously and allow God, hallelujah, to use you in supernatural ways and let God be pleased with your lifestyle and with your obedience towards him. And um, if, if also I want to say this, if you have if you happen to have, you know, a, a, a topic, a biblical topic that you are struggling with and, and that you, you know, you can't seem to, you know, get your hand around it. Uh, feel free to send me a, an email or a text or a message. Let me know and I'll be more than happy to have a Bible study on it also. 
you know so from time to time if i get a message and somebody wants me to talk about something we're just gonna put the book of revelation to the side and we're gonna talk about that topic the follow the, the next you know wednesday so if within this week period of time i i get a message i will definitely cover that bible study next wednesday and then the following wednesday will continue with revelation so tonight we have completed revelation chapter six i am very excited and we're gonna get into chapter seven this is awesome so praise the lord for that so i encourage you all please remember to go ahead and like uh our facebook uh channel please like our facebook channel and also go on youtube and subscribe to our youtube channel it is very important to us and i would appreciate it i'm listen i'm not asking you for money i'm not asking you for anything this is something very easy that you can do just go ahead and subscribe to the channel it is very important to us i keep stressing it so that that is to show you how important it is so please go ahead do that for your dear servant and God, he will bless you. And it is my prayer that tonight's Bible study has been very educational, very knowledgeable, very inspiring, and that you have been blessed through it. And I pray that God will allow you and me to be here again next Wednesday at 10 p.m. for another session. Remember, Tuesday night, 9.45 p.m., we're going to be here also with Pastor Herman and myself for the uh, broken chain prayer with that being said heavenly father we give you praise we give you glory we honor you god we we magnify your name for there is none like you father we thank you for your word of wisdom we thank you for your word of knowledge we thank you for the knowledge of the word father god we thank you for the fear that you're placing in us oh god so that we may be able to serve you hallelujah and to honor you in every aspect of our lives Oh God, today, the word that was taught today, Father, allow this word to fall in good ground, Father. Do not let the enemy steal this word from us, O oh Lord, uh, but allow it to bear fruit by the thousands in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, I pray, hallelujah, for every soul that is listening to me even right now, Father God. I pray of a special blessing upon their lives and those, Father, that have been shaken in their walk with you, God. I pray, Father, that you will touch them right now. Hallelujah. That their walk, Father God, will be straightened with you, Lord Most High. Father, I give you praise and I thank you right now. I thank you, my God, for this ministry. Hallelujah. Apostolic Church of Christ and uh, and, and the Nduje Corporation Broadcasting Network, Father. Hallelujah. Expand our territory, Lord. Uh, bring about favor, grace, and mercy uh, that we may continue to share your word father god to the lost souls that will come to you for your glory oh god we give you praise and we bind every plot uh, every demonic activity and association in the name of jesus we break them today and we commend them to note by the power of the holy spirit uh, father we thank you for blessing us tonight uh, we give you glory and praise uh, in the mighty name of jesus christ that we pray amen and amen hallelujah people of god god bless you god keep you all y'all have a great night and i look forward to see you next tuesday at 9 45 p.m and wednesday night at 10 p.m and and do me a favor again please uh, like our facebook page dcbn duje corporation broadcasting network and then switch to youtube and like and please subscribe to our youtube channel dcbn hallelujah for the glory of god y'all have a great night god bless you god keep you i love you all and i'll see you next week